So, uh, chat me up about this, Conrad. Uh, before we get to the match, how was the match received with Shane Douglas and Bam Bam Bigelow? Not good. Uh, too long is uh, the common theme. They go 25 minutes. You know, Bigelow is north of 350. It's probably too long for him. It only gets a star in three quarters. Okay. Wow. So not everything. And see, I, I had the impression back in the day when I was elsewhere and I didn't watch ECW, but I always had the impression that fans and Melter absolutely loved everything ECW did. Everything was five stars, everything. They loved it all, but apparently I was wrong, right? Yeah. I mean, there were some things that obviously Brother, they shit on. I heard Shivani up here talking shit on his podcast with that fucking fat fuck from Alabama, Conrad. I hear they're talking about me, Taz. I told Conrad not to say my fucking name no more. I'm up here cutting a promo with a chew of tobacco in my mouth. No, they're not parking lot panties. It's tobacco. What are you looking at? Yeah, I used to have a podcast. Now I got a radio show. I turned this shit into a real hustle. Now I talk to the marks about sports like lacrosse. Hmm. Well, well, I don't know what to say. Say something, Joey. There you go. Thank God. So there's your next pay-per-view. Yeah. Which we got to cover sometime. Yeah. Living dangerously. Which I believe happened on the day my grandmother died. What, uh, what is it about this pencil thin mustache on our ring announcer here? I don't know. He looks like he's uh, a mater D or a porn actor or both. Yeah. Or it's Bob Ortiz, by the way, Bob Ortiz, or maybe he is a refugee from Honduras. I don't know. What do you think of this, uh, entrance set uh, here? Uh, it's unique. It, I, I like it. The fact that it has orange lights like we do in Patreon. That's our color. It feels a lot like, uh, Jim Crockett promotions, like a starcade set up from like 86. Yeah. It's all what the budget will afford, right? By the way, the, Let, the little dude with the, uh, who's following bam, bam to the ring. Yeah. That is the Pennsylvania state athletic commissioner. He was a big, really? he was a big wrestling fan and just wanted to be around the business and would give ECW and various different folks who ran in Philadelphia a hard time. I think he just really loved the business. Not a lot of people very positive about him. Well, there's, uh, I, uh, throughout the years, I have never heard anything good written or talked about when it comes to pro wrestling about a state athletic commission. Accurate. I agree with yeah. that. Uh, and, and I think we can call it like we see it here, a state athletic commission. They were just looking for a payday for mu Yeah, that's all. And you know, they, a lot of them were, were big wrestling fans. So they wanted to get you know, pictures with the guys and hang around the guys and slide some hundred dollar bills in their pocket every now and again and roll time. And it's, it is the main reason I, I think it's well-documented. I I'm saying something I'm sure everybody knows the main reason why Vince says we're not a sport. We are entertainment because he wanted to get those motherfuckers off his back and believe you me, they were motherfuckers. So I, I want to tell you, this is, uh, this was a big show for ECW. It was a big crowd and it's in Pittsburgh and Shane Douglas is local to the area. So he helped sort of co-promote this locally and really wanted to pack the place. And it's his crowning moment. He is going to be challenging his nemesis and former member of the triple threat. Of course he's out now and it's, uh, it's a new era for the franchise and this is supposed to be his crowning moment here in front of his hometown crowd. And Meltzer would remark in the observer that it was sort of a, a tepid reaction. It wasn't the big pop. It wasn't flair in Charlotte or Bret Hart in Calgary. I love this, uh, behind the scenes shot of him getting ready and coming through the curtain. Now that was very cool. What's wrong with our girl here. 
She's on crutches. I, I know. Did somebody hurt her? Damn them. Damn them. But I I'd thought you, would, you, you don't hate the crutches because look what it does. No, no it, it, it poofs those things up. What, she, the, the crutches? Yeah, the cr- that's right. I'm looking right at the crutches right now. Absolutely. Hey, it, uh, uh, what company do you think manufactured those crutches? Oh, it's, it's a company out of, uh, Kansas out of City, North right? Land. Yeah. Out of, out of North Lansdale, Pennsylvania. It's called Patreon crutch Inc. As, as you know, we kind of rely on a Patreon crutch at times. Uh, come on, give me the shot I'm looking for here, man. No, I'm not Bam Bam's head. Come on, motherfuckers. Let's go. When you've got, there you go. Man, I, I, I got to say, I've seen a lot of people on crutches, but no one can work a crutch like Francine. <laughs> oh, God. What do you think Bam Bam is thinking? Man, she's thinking, man, look at her on them crutches, man. Man, look at her. Look at that girl. Huck. Why didn't I have Blue Chew with me? Why don't, just, why don't just someone just backhand that athletic commission guy? She's not going to be able to get in the ring, is she? With those, oh man, we need, we need Francine in the ring. We need Francine in the ring. Come on now. Ah, thank you, sweetheart. I, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Do you know what? I've, I've seen pictures of her at uh, autograph signings. She, she is still all the way live. Are you? You on Blue Chew right now? What's that? You on Blue Chew right now? No, but I uh, right now no. Okay. She's my own personal Blue Chew. You see, if you know where I'm coming, but she just all the way live and just. Uh, Are you okay? Yeah. I feel like you're Stay having it. an aneurysm here. You know what? I just, I, I, I don't get it. You see, and and I, I don't get it. Uh, why they don't show there. That's what I'm looking. That's the shot I'm looking for kids. There you go. Do a slow reveal. Come on, man. When you got a beautiful woman, well, go take a look at ugly ass Shane Douglas. You got a beautiful woman. You got to show her and look at that sign. You are in Francine territory or was that franchise territory? Welcome home franchise. Okay. I believe Shane yeah. Douglas still has that belt that, uh, is in Bam Bam's hand. Really? Yeah. Have you offered to buy that from him? Why would you assume that I would want to buy that belt? Because you got a collection of like 5,000 belts with the exception of one. You've got just about every belt you've ever wanted. Which one have I wanted that I don't have? Uh, the one that's full of dog hair up in an attic where rat shits all over it. Right now, why why are you letting the rat shit all over it? Well, uh, but that's I mean I know that's what Klondike liked. Okay, I don't. Well, I don't tell the rats where to shit. You know, they shit where they want to listen, shit. Listen, speaking of shit, okay. How about? And I couldn't believe it. So we get we get David Crockett snuck into the green room before the show, and. Mm. You say, listen, I want to tell you why I told you Valerie shouldn't come. His wife. Our show oh. is, is a little, uh, well, it's dirty. Yeah. And we're going to talk about nasty stuff. And we, uh, we talk about Klondike bill on the show and immediately yeah. he goes, oh, the way he used to have those girls shit on the coffee tables. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> like. That's not supposed to come out of David Crockett's mouth. And he knew exactly what we were talking about before we ever even met. Oh, the way he used to have those girls shit on the glass coffee table. Unbelievable. And I thought, uh, and I, I thought one of the great stories and David told us some great stories. I thought one of the great stories when, when David thinks about the great rivers in the business, you know, we think about like, uh, Kurt Hennig, Mr. Fuji. He thinks about Johnny Valentine and he tells us the story 
that they used to feed the wrestlers. The wrestlers would have, uh, they would be at WRAL in Raleigh and they would do interviews during the day and TV at night. So they would be there all day and they would feed them buffet style. And Johnny Valentine, a lot of times would shit in a cup. David didn't use the words. He said, do his business in a cup, but he would shit in a cup. And then as he would be going through the buffet line, like let's say there was a country fried steak, he would dump his turds in the country fried steak and stir it up. Uh, and none of the, if, if Johnny Valentine was in line, you wouldn't eat that day. You made sure you're in line before Johnny Valentine. What type of person Conrad would it take to shit in country fried steak? We'd have to ask Sean Waltman. <laughs> what does she, wait a minute. Is there a story that I don't know here? Um, Sean Waltman, when he was in the WWF once shit in Mark Henry sandwich <laughs> and Mark Henry ate it. <laughs> Mark did not notice that it had shit in it. And it wasn't until they spoofed the nation of domination as part of DX yeah. where he called himself Ms. Ark and painted yeah. himself black and talked about eating shit that the rib was revealed. Wow. And, and I'm happy to report Sean Waltman is still alive. Jesus. If there is one human that I would absolutely never shit in their food, it is it's Mark, Mark. Henry. Did he shit in there just to show everybody? Well, I got balls. I'm going to do it. Or he had heat. He didn't like him or just a rib. I, I don't know. What was, what's the answer to that? I don't get it. How about so this? No matter what the answer is, is it, mm -hmm. uh, is it, is, is it adequate? Wow. You know what I mean? Like there is, there is no answer. Like, yeah. no matter what the answer is, it's not, it's not sufficient. You, you, yeah. You're shitting in a dude's food. Yeah. So we are, we're talking about shit sandwiches here and Shane Douglas is having a match coincidence. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. I got to tell you, I was a Shane Douglas Mark in this era and I'm not exactly sure why I just know yeah. I was, I thought ECW convinced me that Taz and Shane Douglas, these guys and Rob Van Dam, that they could go anywhere and be big stars anywhere. Shane, uh, Shane was, I can understand why you were Shane Douglas Mark. God, he could talk. Anybody that could talk was over. What's he going to do? Is he, was he threatening Francine? Yes. That motherfucker. Don't ever do that. She's a lady. Why? She's absolutely a lady. Yeah. Yeah, boy, you, you can tell. They, they were given a lot of time for this match and knew it. And so they are just taking their time here to let the time go by. Heyman would tell Dave Meltzer that the previous match was going nowhere. So they cut it short and that extra time went here onto this match. Wow. All right. Well, I guess that's, that's a good excuse as any. For a fucking match, it's still got about 20 minutes to go or so. Oh, God. Yeah, you know, look, you got a guy the size of Bam Bam Bigelow. He can't give you long matches. I mean, he can. He can give them to you, but he shouldn't be asked to. Because you're going to get things like this. Just grabbing the top rope and leaning and driving a knee into the throat or something like that. Looks like we did. looks like, uh, and this obviously outside of Pittsburgh, we had some, uh, look at this. Wow. Pick up. That's a pretty good spot. A referee. I'm going to make it a fast count to get the fuck out of here. Two count. Quite a look. Bam, bam, Bigelow had, he was ahead of his hello girl. So Francine's going to be at wrestle, wrestle Cade. Yep. She gonna be there on Sunday. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not booking this. I'm going to send her a, a message right now. What do you, I mean, 
Why do you want to? What's the plan? I want to I wanna meet her in person. And do what? I don't know. I mean, didn't you? Isn't it? it is, and do what? You don't have to. Ever, when you meet somebody in person, you don't have to do anything. No, but you I'm just, just saying, say, like, your, your goal is to drive to North Carolina to meet Francine. No, my, my goal is to drive North Carolina, possibly get paid and meet Francine. Okay. Now that makes sense. But why are you texting Francine? You should try to get booked. Why aren't who would, who you would, booked? How, how am I booked and Bruce is booked and you're not booked? Well, cause you, you know, <clears throat> well, you ever heard of the thing called being over? <laughs> Have you? Yeah. Okay. You, you guys are over. Okay. Oh, I think you're over too. Yeah. Not, not to the extent of you motherfuckers. One, two, uh, and a kick you know, out. Online, everybody says that me and you are doing the better podcast. Unless we say Patreon, then they get pissed off. What, well, what word are we not allowed to say? Well, we can say motherfucker, uh, but we can't say Patreon. Oh, I see. So I guess I'll go Piz Atreon. Uh, well, you know, our, our podcast is different. We're just a couple of guys, a couple of friends sitting around watching wrestling together, talking about it, reacting to spots, shitting on things when we have to fawning over beautiful women, uh, busting each other's chops, talking about getting a, uh, hard on. Oh, uh, it is weird that you've started to talk about your Peter so much lately. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, uh, okay. Uh, l- let me try to explain this to you. Okay. My Peter, if I can use that term. Yeah, you can. <laughs> It's kind of like my superpower. Let's no, no. It's like the, the, the second toe on my left foot. My Peter is how, okay. How, how do you mean? I know it's there. I don't use it that much. Huh? That's what I mean. But could you, we'll find out Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? <clears throat> I, uh, uh, besides you're not going to you change your mind. Well, look, I, uh, I know they have it during Thanksgiving weekend and I know people have cabin fever during Thanksgiving weekend. And I guess that's a good time to have it. I, I just, we're going to have family in and I mean, I, I can't, you know, say, Hey, I'd like to have dinner with you guys again tonight, but I got to go, uh, meet Francine. What, what, <laughs> what's wrong with that? Okay. What? Well, but with you and me as guys, ain't nothing wrong with that, but. I'm not so sure it would fly at the house. So, oh, oh, I didn't realize that you were just trying to do what made Lois happy. Uh, you see, you obviously haven't been married long enough. You'll learn. I think you may have been married too long. (laughs) Can't argue with that one, buddy. (laughs) What you mean? Every time I look at your grinning face, you know what I'm thinking of? What? Mama Shivani coming somebody. <laughs> I'm going straight to hell. Why? Doesn't matter how many times I go to mass. Doesn't how many times I go to confession. Doesn't matter how many times I read scripture. When I get to the pearly gates, he's you know what God's going to say? Mama Shivani gummed one. <laughs> no, he's going to say, fuck you, you slap dick. Take off. <sighs> oh, well. Well, you had a good run. Yes, we're having fun. Uh, that's a good thing. God, we still got double digits to go in this match. This is the match that never <laughs> ends. Listen, I know you've had a lot of fun. Because I introduced you to two really hot shows. Barely legal. And then Heat Wave. Uh, 1998. Right. But now this. Yeah. Well, you, you can't really listen. It is absolutely impossible. I really believe that it's impossible to continue to have five star shows, even three star shows every time. It's, it's kind of like the movie industry, right? 
you come out and you have a movie that's a great movie. Then you say, okay, we're going to do Rocky two. Right. And then you do Rocky two and they say, oh, that wasn't bad. And then you do Rocky three and they say, eh, okay, that was okay. And then you hit Rocky four and you think, fuck. You Ro- should have stopped at Rocky three. No, that's not true. Rocky four is the best Rocky ever. Don't you fucking disparage Rocky four. Is that the one where, uh, Ivan Drago, Apollo- the Russian. Yeah. If he dies, he Ap- dies. Apollo Creed died. Right. Yeah. Spoiler. Okay. Oh, uh, is that a spoiler? Really? 30 years later. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I wanted you to laugh. That's my bad. Okay. okay. <laughs> Living in America. Ow. I feel good. Dun, 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 dun. You think that's the best Rocky? Yeah. Without question. No, it's not. It's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. You don't know. I do. I do. Well, what's the best? Number one is the best. Oh, God damn. How I fucking far. No, listen, not everybody listening to this was born in 53. I know I'm in Pittsburgh and I'm doing a Philadelphia song. Adrian, I love you. Are you okay? I'm going to have to watch. I'm going to have to watch it again. Yeah, Rocky Rocky won one best picture. One best fucking picture. What does that matter? You think it doesn't matter? No. Then why all those slapdicks queue up in Los Angeles once a year around the end of uh, March, 1st of April? Because it matters. Hey, look, the table got ECW spray painted on it. Oh, oh God. Yeah, but look at people are not. I don't know if these people are leaving or not. But it, it's funny. They used to used to run through with a sign up and down on the on the highway there. Now they're just walking. After uh, what after what we've seen with Sabu and Sandman, does this table really matter here at all? See, I'm glad you mentioned that because look at the pop. It's one table. But because it was used as part of storytelling in a match, yeah, it was a high spot and everybody right. popped. Everybody stood and starts chanting and people are into it. But when they broke 9,000 before they had what you would call high spot fatigue, which is available now at lowestrules.com. <laughs> and if you can't buy a shirt, don't forget to support us on Patron or Patreon as we like to call it, man, Patron. this is a, uh, this is a hell of a match. It is. <laughs> hey, hypothetically, if you were going to watch Rocky and some yeah. listeners wanted to do a watch along of Rocky with you, where could they do that? At patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. Where else could they hear you rant and rave about judge Jeff Jones at patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. Where can they find slap dick theater where you talk about Terry Taylor at patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. Hey, here's an idea. Give it to yourself for Christmas. <laughs> Give what to yourself for Christmas, a subscription at patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. We're really kicking this into high gear. Aren't we? <laughs> well, mean, listen, if Sab, if, if you say Sabu, if, Sabu, if huh? Sabu and Sandman can do the same spot over and over, why can't we? <laughs> By the way, why hey, do you, why do you call him Sabu? His name is Sabu. Uh, I don't know. Sabu. It depends. You, it's, you but say, you, it's just fun to me. You go library, Yete, <laughs> uh, Sabu, uh, restaurants, restaurants. You say restaurants like a fucking hillbilly. <laughs> it's the well, guess what? You know what? Restaurants. Here's what. No, here's what I want to do. Okay. okay. I want, I want you and I to take a road trip. Okay. Oh, another God, road trip. Not again. Yeah. yeah. We need to take another road trip a- and listen, it, our road trip was well received. Okay. We're going to take a road trip to my hometown <sighs> of, Cra- of Craigsville, Virginia. Oh, I can't wait to go there. Okay. Just tell everybody okay. how much they suck. Okay. 
And then, and then, where's Mama Stavani? She needs to come over here and gum one. <laughs> but when we get there, all right, when we get there, we do a video and take a look at the town of Craigsville, Virginia. Okay. If you think Guntersville, Alabama is redneck, you have no idea. You have no idea. Craigsville, Virginia trumps all. And I said the word Trump. I didn't mean political. I mean, Trump's all. So that's what we'll do. We'll take a road trip to Craigsville. Look at her hopping around on one leg. Here comes take a road- Peter Cottontail. <laughs> Hopping down the bunny trail, clippity cloppity, give me a blue chew. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll chew it up and have another one. So I have a hard on till it's done. Hippity hoppity Easter's on its way. Blue chew. Roll credits. <laughs> you just did a hard on Easter song. <laughs> we can't beat I- that. Well, I told you I'm going to hell. I might as well. I, I can we go to confession this weekend. It doesn't matter. My goodness. Okay. So anyway, uh, what were we talking about? I don't remember. Like, oh, well, we're going to go to Craigsville and we're going to do that video. One, two. We'll talk to some of my friends I grew up with. Uh, cause they're still there. They didn't know how to get out of town. How did you get out of town, Tony? Well, just like Conrad said, try the door. It worked for me. Just walk out, get in a car and keep on fucking driving. That's how you get out of town. That's why I hear, why I hear, uh, when people say, you know, in some movies, he was stuck in this town. He, he couldn't get out. You can get out. Just fucking get out. You can do it. You just get out. Just go stick your thumb out, hit your ride. Take a couple of dollars, take a bus trip, just get out of town, start your life over. I got friends that I grew up with who are still in Craigsville, Virginia, who are my friends. Why? Well, because they couldn't get out. Fucking I got out. You can get out. You can change your life. Oh my God. When did this become a fucking Tony (laughs) Robbins seminar? (laughs) Well, about, uh. About 13 minutes into this match, it became a Tony Robbins seminar. And, hey, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm pissed because I'm not seeing enough Francine. Look, look at this shot. You're telling me that's all you can show Francine? Shit. If I'm the director here and I'm watching this match, I'm going to say, man, we need to focus on the girl with the crutches. Because why? Because those crutches are made from uh, Patreon.com or slash WHW Monday. I can, I can hear people clicking on subscribe. <laughs> click, 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 click. But daddy, I want something for Christmas. Fuck that. Click, click, click. I'm going to follow Tony and Conrad. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Who's coming in. Chris Candido. Uh, and was that Lance storm? Yep. With the blonde rat tail. Yeah. With the blonde rat tail. Oh, Fuck. Shit. You know how to, throwing somebody out of the ring is dangerous enough, but throwing them over the post, throwing them, uh, the post where you could slip it jaw first on the top of the post. Poor old Bam Bam's blowed up here, man. He's gone. Literally. See, look at him just leaning. He's just leaning, man. Trying to, he's saying, he's, man, thank God. Shane obviously gigged himself. On that, boy, did he ever. Holy shit. Uh, there's no more gigging anymore, is it? I don't even think they gig. Do they? Uh, I don't even think they gig on independent shows anymore, do they? You were just talking about Jimmy Havoc. Okay. Yeah, you're right. He still gigs himself because he's England's most dangerous man. Cause, cause you know, in England, they, you know, England, they, uh, they're different than we are. They now listen, I, my mom was telling me about all their terroristic threats and she read about how very recently they held the guy down and gave him a bunch of paper cuts and then squeezed them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my 
<laughs> We're going to take care of the white imperialist pig. Give me your hand. <laughs> oh, somebody find me a lemon. Yeah, mom. Oh, no, the humanity. Stop. And that, ladies and gentlemen, we just got from Al Jazeera TV. Can you believe what they're doing to the people now in England? Yeah, my mom's going to give me a warning. Baby, you be careful now. They got <laughs> citrus terrace over there. Hold you down, <laughs> squeeze lemons all over you. Like he's a damn lobster tail. <laughs> Can't go to London town. Look at, look at Francine hopping along. <laughs> yeah. yeah Swinging that Patreon. Yeah. You're not kidding. Don't you hurt her. You some bitch. Don't you hit her. You motherfucker. Fuck. He swung at her. Doesn't he know she's hurting? Fuck. I'm close. God. Thank goodness. I wouldn't there. I'd have rolled my fat ass in the ring. Said motherfucker. You blown up motherfucker. Don't you ever hear her swing a crutch at her again? Even though that crutch is a patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday crutch. Oh, ah, ain't it for real? Yeah, he did. Didn't he? <laughs> That's what happens when you're 400 pounds blowed up. You just say, ah, fuck, I'll fuck go ahead. This is going to hurt. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. I'm tired. Yeah, he is too, man. Look at him, man. He, he's just like, fuck this man. I'm, I'm, I'm. Eight minutes used to be my max. What the fuck is going on? Jesus. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. I, I know why fans are shitting on this one. I get it. Wow. That's all I can say as well. I think the, actually what the funniest part of this now is that, wow. How about that Beal? Big Beal. That is a Beal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just want to make sure I got it right. I mean, you're the fucking guy who calls matches. Well, you know, they used to say, I didn't know the difference between a Beal and a hip toss. And I used to say, who gives a flying fuck? Just enjoy the match. Don't worry about what I'm saying. Don't worry about what I'm saying. Worrying about how I'm saying it. In other words, if I say hip toss or if I say Beal, that's not like me saying hip toss, Beal. That's the finishing move. Magnum TA style. Wow. Belly to belly. But now can he cover him? Okay. Well, the fans kind of getting in the finish right now. Francine's responsible for that, by the way. Her beating on the uh, apron has uh -huh. got everybody clapping in unison and getting with it. Yeah, yeah, she's she's she knows what's going on. She's very good at ringside. Not only beautiful, obviously, and not only am I obviously just drooling all over, but she knows how to work a match as well. So we get remnants of a table. That's table number 35 that was broken by Sandman and Sabu. Uh, and I was just thought he was going to sit his ass in that chair. <laughs> so what left of a chair and a table. <laughs> the budget has called for 36 tables. We needed 37. So we'll just use the, uh, we'll use the 36 table. What's left of it. Wow. There it is. One, two, three. How about the reaction of the fans here? Huh? That's pretty fucking good. And a new champion, Shane Douglas. So Conrad, you end your pay-per-view, right? You end your pay-per-view like you, uh, with on a high note, right? Am I right? Yeah. The right, hometown right? hero. Yeah. Wins the world title in the main event. Pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Candido and Lance storm into well, try to celebrate with the ch new champion who is kind of down selling right now with Francine. And there it is. Shane Douglas gets the heroes raise and his hand is in the air. And there's your ECW champion. 
All right. Well, for all the bad things that were in this match, I like the end. I always like, what do you end with? Do you end with something good? You have them leave happy? I say yes. So, yeah, not the best pay-per-views in the world, pay-per-view in the world, but a very good ending for it. Overall, of the three pay-per-views from ECW you've seen so far, where does this one rank? Uh, number third out of three. 